Okay, so now let's talk about the limits at infinity. So the way I like to think about it is that there's this rule, and you can determine the limit at infinity if you can figure out if the function is even or if it's odd. So let me just quickly run through what makes a function even and what makes a function odd. So even functions, f of negative x equals f of x. Now what does that mean? So I know that an even function is x squared. I know that because if I have a quick sketch of x squared here. If I have 1 on this side and negative 1 on this side, these their y values are the same. f of negative 1 and f of 1 are the same. So this is even, right? Another way I like to think of even functions is that their exponent is even. So like if you have x to the 4th, x to the 6th, x to the 8th, they're normally going to be even. There are some exceptions. Um, really, x to the 4th plus x cubed plus x squared, this is still even. The highest uh, exponent has to be even for it to be even. So like if it were x cubed plus x squared, this is not going to be even just because it has x squared in it. It's going to be it's going to be odd, right? But I'll get to that, because x cubed is an odd number. So odd functions, I know exam an example of this is x cubed. And I know that because the definition of odd functions is that f of negative x equals negative f of x. So if I were to graph x cubed, graph it, and I were to pinpoint 1 and negative 1, I would see that f of 1 is 1, and f of negative 1 is negative 1, right? Those aren't the same. They're, it's not going to be an even function. f of negative 1 does equal negative f of 1, because f of 1 is 1, negative f, negative 1, and f of negative 1 is negative 1. That was really confusing there for a second. Just makes sense, right? So, odd functions have x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh. But these have to be the biggest exponent in the function. Like I said before, if you were to have x to the fourth plus x to the third, that's not odd. That's even, because the highest uh, exponent is four, not three. Okay? So, now that we know that, we can determine the limit at infinity of even and odd functions. So let me graph my x squared again. So when a problem asks you what the limit at infinity is, it's basically just telling you, like, where is that graph heading to at infinity? Where is it going to? There's no real way that you can figure that out unless it's an asymptote, but it's just where is it going to, just in that general vicinity. So as x approaches infinity, so as it goes down here, we want to know what the limit is. So that's going to be what, what, is, what is our, how is our y behaving? Now we can see that as x approaches infinity, our y is going to approach infinity. It's just going to keep increasing, keep increasing. So infinity. Now if we look at as x approaches negative infinity going this way, because it's an even function, it's still going to be approaching infinity, right? It's still curved up. Our, our y is still increasing. So infinity. Now, if we were to look at our odd function, right, that's our x cubed. As x approaches infinity going this way, our y behavior is still increasing, increasing until infinity. So you could say this is infinity. But then because of the definition of an odd function, our uh, negative x's, they decrease. As our x approaches infinity, negative infinity, our y's are decreasing. They just keep decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. So our limit is negative infinity, right? Now, suppose someone asked you to find the limit as x approaches infinity of a negative even function, right? How would we figure that out? So the way I like to think about this is sometimes I'll just make our motions during a test and sometimes just got to do that.
but I know that when an even is positive, it's like this. So I know that both arms are headed to infinity. Now, when I know when I know that a even function is negative, I make my arms go like this, like this, like a upside down bowl. So when our our evens are negative, let's take an example of negative x squared like this. I know that both as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity over here, it's going to be negative infinity, right? I know because that's that's where the y is heading towards negative infinity. Now, if it were to ask me the limit as x approaches infinity of a negative odd function, this is our normal odd function going like this. Our positive x is going to infinity. Our negative x is going to negative infinity. Now, if we have a negative odd, everything shifts, right? Now we're going like this. Our negative x's are going to infinity, and our positive x's are going to negative infinity. So, as x approaches infinity, that's over here, as our x approaches infinity, imagine this is our uh, x-axis that I'm pointing to here. And because we're approaching infinity going this way, and our arm is pointed down this way, it's going to negative infinity. And we know the opposite is true as x approaches negative infinity of a negative odd function. Right? This is the x-axis. Our arm is pointed up, so this is going to be infinity. So that's an easy way to figure out the limits at infinity of an even or an odd function. Next, we'll look at some example problems that are more specific. Okay, so now let's look at some examples. So our first example is the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared plus 4x cubed plus 3. So the first thing I like to do when I'm given this type of problem is to figure out if this function is even or odd. You're, you might be tempted to say that this function is even because our highest uh, exponent is 2. But if you move on to the second term, you see that the highest the highest exponent is 3. So we can rewrite this as 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3, right? So now what I like to do is I like to sketch a graph of x cubed. This function has a lot of dilations and translations, but I like to focus on the bare x cubed because it can get a bit confusing if you apply all those dilations. It's just easier to focus on x cubed. I have a video about uh, dilations and absolute value. You can click on it here somewhere, provide a link, but we're just focusing on the bare minimum here. So we know that our x cubed uh, function moves like this. As x approaches infinity, our y approaches infinity too. We just keep increasing. As our x approaches negative infinity, our y approaches negative infinity. So we're asked the limit as x approaches infinity. So we know that that's going to be infinity. So suppose we have a different problem. The limit as x approaches infinity of negative 3x plus 4x cubed plus 3 equals what? Now here, you might be tempted to uh, apply this negative to this function. However, if you were to rewrite it as 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3, you would see that this negative does not apply to all of the terms, just this 3x squared, right? For the function to be flipped over the x-axis, this negative has to apply to our highest exponent, and it doesn't. So our uh, function is going to be... Let's say as x approaches negative infinity, make things more fun. So our uh, bare minimum sort of graph is still going to be x cubed. It's not going to be negative x cubed, right? It's still x cubed. So we look at it as x approaches negative infinity going this way. Our y is approaching negative infinity too. All right. So now let's do a limit problem with an even function. Let's say we have something like negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals what? So 
here, we can see that our highest exponent is x squared, so this is an even function. And since this negative applies to our highest exponent, we know that it is actually going to be uh, flipped over the x-axis. So if we focus on our x squared bare minimum graph, we get this. That is a really bad graph. Don't pay attention to how bad that is. Just it's like an upside down upside down bowl. If you were to have a bowl, you just spill all your cereal. Um, anyway, uh, okay, so as the limit, the limit as x approaches infinity, so our x's are increasing, we can see that our y's are decreasing. So we're going to have negative infinity. In this case, because our negative actually applies to the x squared, it's actually going to be flipped over. Unlike this one, where it didn't apply to the uh, highest exponent. So now, let me show you graphical. So let's look at this one first. 3x squared plus 4x cubed plus 3. So the graph with all of its uh, dilations looks kind of like that. So you can see that as our x approaches infinity, as it keeps going this way, this way, this way, it increases, we can see that our y's also increase, increase, increase to infinity. Now, you'll notice that you can still see kind of like the, um, let me focus this again, you can still kind of see the x cubed, but with dilations and translation, right? If this was the origin, this would look just like x cubed. Now, let me plug in the second equation. Um, negative 3x squared plus 4x cubed plus 3. Alright, so here you'll notice that the negative in front of x squared has no effect on the graph. It looks almost identical to the previous graph. That's because it's not on the term that has the highest exponent. Now, if I were to graph negative 3x squared minus 4x cubed plus 3, you would see clearly, focus, focus, you would see clearly that our uh, x cubed graph is flipped over the x axis, the y axis. The y axis in this case, right? Um, so now, let's look at our final graph. Negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Here, you can see this looks kind of like an x squared graph, only it's flipped over the x axis. I should also point out that x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the fifth, x to the seventh look almost identical. x to the fifth, x to the seventh. Right? See how much overlap there is between the three? So the blue one is x to the seventh, the green one is x to the fifth, I believe, and the red one is x to the third. See, they're basically identical. The same goes for x to the second, x to the fourth, and x to the sixth. So uh, that's why it makes sense that these rules apply to all even, in this case, to all even functions because they all look identical. They all decrease until they reach the origin and then they increase once they reach the origin. And then with uh, odd functions, they all increase. Whoops. They all, my screen went kind of. But anyway, they all increase once they reach the origin and then just they just keep increasing. So that's the reason why these all apply to even functions. And then all the rules that apply to odd functions all apply to them.